Good morning from the Green Mountains of Vermont. It is February 23rd and it is 10 10 hours. And it's cold and there's a lot of snow. And I'm putting it off as much as possible. Anyway, this is a follow up on the ammo can Faraday cage. You're doing it wrong. And uh, so. I wanted to say a few things about this and I guess the first thing after saying good morning is why am I doing this and I am doing this for my family I'm old I'm not going to be around that long every time I look up I see daisies but this is is to help help the family hopefully 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 so I go by a name of Opa OPA it's Dutch for grandfather my wife is Dutch and uh, I was kind of saddled with that and I actually kind of like it so who am I? I'm going to give you a brief rundown I'm pretty private I don't I don't want to go into heaviness here my wife and I have traveled all over the world I've had a very exciting life I've done a lot instead of thinking coulda woulda duda duda is that a word? well it is now woulda so we just did it so We've lived all over the world. And in some third world countries, we learned to cope there, and I learned a lot there about living with what you have and making the best out of it and being happy at the same time. I've been a dive instructor for the Royal Dutch Marines, so I lived all over Europe, so Netherlands, Poland, Germany, so Dutch West Indies, and most of the USA been an engineering consultant in the Dutch West Indies got bored and I went to school I paid for it myself to become an anti-terrorism officer after that I became a contractor I worked in international waters on shipping I don't ever want to see the ocean again as long as I live so the last ship I was on was a redone Soviet tank transport and man, that's one of the most uncomfortable ships in the world. Anyway, there's a lot more. That's it. That's who I am. And there's more, but I'm not going to go into that. I'm retired. So I was looking at the comments on the on the first, well, first the only video I've ever done, and it's got it's kind of like uh, Clint Eastwood, good, the bad, and the ugly. But I'm not going to put anybody down. I believe in the First Amendment. People should be able to say what they want to say and how they want to, want to say it. And I think that's good. There's a lot of comments on there that had some really good ideas and uh, some that said you're doing it wrong, you should do this, that, or the other. And that's probably, you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I've done a lot of research into it, but if you people have a better way, I'm totally open to it. So what I would, would implore people that if they have something constructive to say and a way to better the things that we're trying to do is to please get out from behind the keyboard and and make a video and help us all out uh, this is not the time or age to fool around with uh, not doing things right being able to we need to do things better the world's a mess it is it is a mess anyway so some of the comments were were really I thought funny there was one on there and it said if I've got a cell phone and I put it in a Faraday cage and we have an EMP or a coronal mass ejection he says if I take it out who the heck am I going to call my immediate thought was Ghostbusters but uh, of course that's <laughs> yeah I thought it was cute anyway if you have a cell phone then you have an SD card in it and some of these SD art SD cards that you can put in a cell phone are quite large and think about all the information instructional videos uh, anything you wanted that you could put on that SD card and then if your cell phone made it you might not be able to call Ghostbusters but you could sure pull up an awful lot of information on your phone and uh, there was a gentleman that asked about I think it was a gentleman asked about uh, he wanted to put a 6,000 watt generator he wanted to make a Faraday cage for it boy that would be a project I think 
but uh, and he asked if there were any resources for the, for that, and there are. There is an outfit by the name of Mission Darkness. They have a website, and they make some absolutely huge bags with double RF shielding. And uh, you better have some really, really deep pockets in order to buy these things. That's that's out of my reach. And uh, but if you've got the deep pockets, then I say you should go for it. And people are asking, you know, like uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I I always, you know, you've heard this before. There was a comment in there: should I put the shiny side up or the shiny side down? That's a legitimate question. That is a legitimate question. If you don't know. How do you find out? Well, we need the help of the community. So we need everybody to work on things to help each other. And uh, time is getting getting short. So uh, I'm asking that people that leave a comment, if there's things that we can do better, then please leave a, a link to a site or a link of something that you've done. And uh, We'll check it out, and if it's better, then I'm more than willing to change. I'll do something different. I've done a lot of research, tons of research, and I've known some very good engineers. So I'm going by what they say because I trust them. And uh, there was also another comment about the shielding on top of the ammo can, and I would like I'm going to turn you on to a website. The main reason I'm, I'm, I'm doing this is uh, because people are asking what do I put in the thing and that's a big one. The reason I do it is for power. I want to have power. So I want to be able to use radios. I want to be able to use alternating current. I want to be able to use 12 volt DC, 24 volt DC, 48 volt DC, whatever you've got. But there's ways of doing it that can be cheap and uh, easy to do. It's, it's very, anyway, there's a fellow by the name of Dr. Arthur Bradley, the author of Disaster Preparedness for EMP Attacks and Solar Storms. And this guy, I believe he's on YouTube as Dr. EMP. I'll look it up. I'll, I'll put a link to this webpage that I'm on. And also, I'll try to very hard to find his site. This guy has got more sophisticated equipment than most people could buy in a lifetime and it's all to do with checking out EMP uh, ways to protect against it and it's a, you'll be watching a lot of it anyway what does it do conductive layer reflects incoming fields you can read this for yourself I'm not going to reiterate it I get tired when people do that uh, the thing that I wanted to put through to people that I had a lot, that I saw a lot of questions on was how thick should the conducting layer be? And he states through extensive research that the conductive layer can be very thin because of something known as the skin effect. That term describes the tendency of current to flow primarily on the skin of a conductor. After doing research, that's what I decided to do with the aluminum foil. By the way, on this one, I haven't opened this up for a long, long time. The seal is perfect, and I think I've got like, I don't know, six sheets of aluminum foil on this, and uh, it did really, really well. Perfect seal. Okay, so to get back to that, as an example, consistent, uh, yep, blah, as an example, consider that for a frequency of 200 megahertz, the skin depth of aluminum is only about 21 microns. Micron is really small. EMP pulses can have frequency content that ranges up to a thousand megahertz. Okay, big difference, right? Therefore, wrapping a box in several layers of heavy-duty aluminum foil, typically about 24 microns thick, which is not much, provides the necessary conductor thickness to protect against high-frequency radiated fields. And then it goes, and that's what we're doing here. So I, I don't use just one sheet. I put as many sheets on as, as the thing will take. I think I went a little fast on the last video. But uh, if it'll take it and not rip and the seal is good, then uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm putting on lots of sheets, just heavy-duty aluminum foil. Uh, other 
comments were about RF shielding to use. I've never used it, but it sounds like a very good idea. And also for a microwave to be a Faraday cage. I've never tried that. I Well, I take that back. I tried it once. I put a cell phone in there and it rang. And this company that I mentioned by the name of Mission Darkness, I didn't bring my cell phone down, has an app that you can download free for Apple and Android. And what this app does is when you buy one of their bags to check if it's EM proof you put your you start this sap you put it in your Faraday bag close the bag you wait a certain amount of time and it will uh, then you take it out and you can see if it leaked if it worked or whatever happened so I have done this I have a wireless router it's a gaming router so that we can go like 200 feet from the house here and still get reception it has eight antennas and uh, it's pretty much ooh -ah as far as power goes and put one of these right smack next to it with that mission darkness application in it and no leakage no nothing so I go by that too anyway it's not going to be a long video I hate long videos but anyway people are asking what do I put in these ammo cans what what and I think most of the things that you need to put in are things that you'll find that you already have. So I don't even remember what's in this. Uh, okay, this has got a portable 30 amp charge controller with an MT50. That's how old eyes can read the charge controller. Uh, USB. And uh, a TWR radio which is a 25 watt radio it's small easy to program and communications are huge uh, this one has Baofeng radios chargers and I have some other stuff electronics you were trying to save electronics the only problem is that geez you know they all run on on power so you've got to have a way to run them on power and if anybody's interested I'll make a video on it it's actually very very easy a uh, few things that you'll have to pick up but none of it is super high cost so and then over here stay stay over here on the other side this monster over here is 32 inches high exists six inches wide and that has handles and it'll slide right under your bed some of these I bought at sportsmansguide.com some of the ones I received from sportsmansguide.com went right straight back so and then eventually I got some good ones no cracks no heavy rust no they were serviceable so this one has got about seven or eight sheets on it and uh, I haven't looked at that one this morning but these two I have this one is a 40 millimeter can and it's a very handy can I should give you an idea. Wow, look at that. Lucky tape measure right there. Alright, so we're looking at approximately 18 inches long. 10 inches high. 6 inches wide. And you can get quite a few things in there. So it uh, becomes obsessive sometimes. It does for me anyway. So I'm thinking about making a video on how to make your own power enough to uh, charge everything. Also, if I know a lot of people have got armament at home, if you have a red dot, if you've got a hollow sun, if you've got nods, which is a night observation device system, uh, you know, it's a night, night vision, thermal, whatever, you can try to protect those this way too and uh, you can double them up with aluminum foil you can do whatever you want so save the things that you think you will need communications I think is is major is huge uh, you know some people have satellite phones but the only thing is there is uh, you know if we get an EMP that's going to put the the places that 
our digital the transfer reroute satellite phone communications like Iridium they're going to be down there's another one out I've still got to got to check this out it's called ISAT phone and it runs on a geostationary orbit and just through the satellite itself and not communications towers or relays you can supposed to be able to message ISAT phone to ISAT phone so but I looked them up and they are really expensive and not only are they expensive but if you want to get I think it's 500 units and not minutes units of communication loaded into one of these things it's five hundred dollars and it keeps you active for a year and I'm thinking to myself self wow that would be a I'd, I'm not sure about that I I've got enough money to to do smoke signals but uh, and maybe the Baofeng oh by the way in some of these third world countries uh, we didn't have Baofengs at the time but we had different radios Motorola's and whatnot and on this one particular island we were working on we had what is a relay system and the relay system worked at, at uh, 1900 hours in the at 1900 hours in the evening 7 o'clock uh, we would everybody pop on their radio we had a frequency picked out already and whoever started the relay for information it was written down always 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 written down because you've heard about people whispering in other people's ears and by the time it gets to the end of the line it's like you know there's a 200 pound gorilla sitting in your lap and it would be written down so when you went to the next person they would write it down they would reread it it would be confirmed and then it went from number two to number three four we had five and we could cover an immense stretch of coastline immense course it was good too because there was ocean on one side it was easier for the transmission to get through anyway that's that's just a thought so anyway uh, yeah have somebody to look up to not me have some find somebody in your life that makes you a role model that not makes you a role model but that you can look at as a role model and try to live live, live up to that and if you stand up for something that's right even if you have to stand up alone stand up I found this through throughout my my whole life so there's a guy that died a long time ago and uh, I've read a lot of his books and uh, he's my he's my role model so don't ever be deceived and if you wanna if you're interested in learning how to make power then we'll do it so help each other please 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 help each other help each other that's it hope is out of here i gotta go shovel snow can't wait see y'all